The idea of being forced into an animatronic suit, of being crushed in the process, of having your balls splattered into jelly and your eyes forced out of your skull is one that would make most people wince and squirm. But what if I told you there is another method of death in the Five Nights at Freddy's universe that would give even that a run for its money? This is Mike, and he just got another new job at the Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Company. This time, he is entertaining the children. How, you ask? Well, dear viewer, he will be dressing as a mascot using the Golden Bonnie Springlock suit. I think we all know where this is going. But before we get into the lore and gore, a quick word from today's sponsor. Enemy cruisers suck. Off to a great start. This video is sponsored by World of Warships. Now, have you ever wanted to destroy a battleship but don't have the money? Or a time machine? Well, World of Warships has got you covered, dear viewer. It's a free-to-play PC title with insane graphics for the $0 price tag, more than 40 different 12v12 arenas, and more than 500 ships across five different classes. And the insane thing is they keep updating this. New ships, new nations, cosmetics, classes, the works. You've got battleships, the destroyers, the cruisers, the aircraft carriers, and the submarines, because fuck the enemy team, am I right? This is about strategy and knowledge. The weather and the objectives can all change on a dime, and they will impact how you play. There is a realistic delay from when you fire to when the shell lands, so you need to know where your target will be when your shell lands, or you've just wasted a shot. And that can mean the difference from sinking a ship or being sunk by one. The community here is electric, by the way. Join the discussions and you'll find passionate players to play with and recreate famous battles and even get involved on some of the tournaments if you're up for it. Console players, do not be disheartened. It's on console too, see here? Download the game now from the link in the description and use the code WARSHIPS to get a bunch of exclusives, including more credits, more doubloons, and your very own ship. Firstly, we need to establish a little bit of backstory on the Springlock suits. In the early 1980s, Fredbear's Family Diner was opened with two Springlock animatronic suits, Fredbear and Spring Bonnie. There was no band of merry animatronics or any of the other numerous characters that seemed to appear out of the fucking ether with every new game and piece of media. Now, the Fredbear suit would go on to cause the bite of 83, where a child was placed into the mouth of the Fredbear suit as a joke by his brother and his friends, only for the suit to then malfunction and crush his head in its jaws. It would appear that the child died instantly, or at least was paralyzed from the neck down. However, a few Easter eggs in the game, coupled with an end screen, suggest actually the child survived, at least for a while, before succumbing to his injuries. The Spring Bonnie costume has a much more morbid history that many of you will already be aware of if you watched my previous video. The Spring Bonnie costume was eventually used by a man called William Afton, who lured five children away from a birthday party into a secluded back room. William then murdered the children and proceeded to hide their bodies in some spare animatronic suits. By this point, the infamous cast of Bonnie, Chica, Foxy and Freddy were a part of the troop, and they provided a suitable hiding place for the children's corpses. After a series of Springlock failures in a sister location, the Springlock suits were decommissioned, and the Spring Bonnie suit was locked away in the safe room of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza after the place was shut down. However, sometime later, William Afton would return to the establishment and destroy the main animatronics in the hope that by doing so, the spirits of his victims that possessed the suit would leave. Sadly, this was not the case, and he attempted to hide inside the Spring Bonnie suit, only for it to malfunction and snap shut with him still inside it. There is another theory I've seen floating about saying that William was seeking immortality and he was going to melt down the cursed animatronics endoskeletons to create soul-infused metal. But that is some deep end of the swimming pool kind of lore and I don't have the skill or knowledge to delve into that right now. A long time later and the Spring Bonnie suit was recovered by a company looking to create a horror-themed establishment around the events that happened at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Little did they know that the corpse of William Afton was still inside the suit and his soul now possessed it. Right then, let's take a closer look at these suits. The fact these things even exist is the biggest fuck you to the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. These are animatronic suits with a fixed metal endoskeleton inside them. The endoskeleton can be compressed and folded away by using a special hand crank to wind up the spring locks, allowing a human being to step into the suit and wear it like a normal mascot costume. 
The problem is, these spring locks are like, I don't know, made in fucking China or something. They've got no structural integrity and they're incredibly sensitive. The slightest bit of moisture or pressure on them can cause the spring locks to fail. And if they do, the occupant will be impaled on the metal parts and quickly begin to bleed out. Not exactly what you want to see at a family establishment, is it? In fact, a training tape supplied on how to use the spring lock suits correctly even states that if the spring locks should fail, the employee should try their best to leave the area before bleeding out so they don't affect the customer experience. How does this company get away with shit like this? Hey, if you get spring locked, please navigate away from the customers before dying. Hey, night guard, if you should happen to die on the job, we'll destroy all the evidence and then notify the authorities. Please sign here. On a related subject, there have been fatalities in connection to the spring lock suits. We're obviously aware of the bite of 83 and the death of the child. In the case of Spring Bonnie, now known as Spring Trap, the suit was both very old and it was stored in a room with a leak. The excess moisture plus years of neglect had caused the mechanical parts to degrade and rust. So when William Afton put it on, all those faults combined with his heavy breathing caused the spring locks to fail and kill him. Ironically, his soul was then bound to the Spring Bonnie suit, identical to the fate of the souls of the children he killed, being bound to the animatronics their corpses were stashed inside. I've seen a few other theories on characters who may or who may not have died inside the suits, such as the Shadow Bonnie character, but these are just speculative theories, so I'm going to omit these and instead ask you guys to comment below any other deaths you may know or have heard of. Back to our dear friend Mike. His first day was going pretty well. He was delivering cake and snacks to all the happy children, and he even put on a show for them with the company of Fredbear up on stage. Soon enough, the time came for the cake to be brought out. He and Fredbear clapped as the children blew out the candles. Mike gave the children a farewell wave, as it was finally time for Bonnie to go and get some sleep now. The children were sad to see Bonnie leave, but Fredbear was already on stage with another song ready to get them all back in the party mood. A colleague told Mike to wait in the services room and that she would be along shortly to help him out of the suit. Mike carefully walked towards the spare parts room, making sure not to bump into any of the chairs or tables. He gently pushed open the door and stood in the middle of the room. Mike felt a bead of sweat run down his temple. It was hot in this suit, and it was hot still in this room. There were no windows, and the air conditioning was being run exclusively into the party room to keep the children cool and happy. As the minutes trickled by, he felt more beads beginning to descend. He began to hear a very faint grinding sound, like metal straining. He exhaled sharply in frustration, sending a spittle of sweat that had collected on his lip outwards. As the sweat landed on the spring lock, the mechanism slipped out of place. Mike's entire world turned black. As the endoskeleton's face came loose and clamped around his head, he felt his eyeballs get crushed as the skeleton's globes were forced into his sockets. He felt his cheeks split and his teeth crack as the mouth segments swung out to meet each other inside his jaw. Two metal beams sprang out from either side, piercing his eardrums. At the same time, several large metal plates began crushing his head from all sides. He tried to yell, but he was already gargling his own blood, which spilled from his mouth and began trickling throughout the suit. More metallic clunks echoed around the room as the trickling blood started a chain reaction of multiple spring lock failures. Mike stood there, jerking in place as multiple metal beams and cogs began shooting through his soft tissues. He could feel metal probes forcing spinal segments through his body. He lost feeling below the waist, but the metal legs held him firm as his spinal cord was severed. He tried to scream again, but the air erupted from the holes in his chest, followed by a red mist from his pierced lungs. Another clunk echoed around the room as the hard plastic parts were driven through the holes into his body. The tears in his abdomen finally met as one, and his organs fell out into the suit. A final spring lock went in his crotch as his stomach acid spilled over it, and his nether regions were skewered. With every lock now open, the suit maneuvered itself into a default pose, with the mouth slightly open and one hand up in a waving position. Mike could not move. He could not speak. He could not hear. He could not see. All he could do was feel the pain and the life slowly draining from him and the shock setting in. It was a slow death, but eventually he began to feel cold. He could feel everything getting heavy and within the space of a few minutes, Mike was finally awarded the sweet release of death. As the employee came rushing into the room apologizing for her lateness, prepared to rehash the story of the child who couldn't find the toilets, she instead stood paralyzed at the monument before her. The spring bonny costume standing tall with a look of joy and cold happiness on its face, while at the same time, the lifeless skewered corpse of her former colleague dripped onto the floor and pieces of his skin hung from the openings in the suit. 
She took out her phone and sent a text she hoped she would never have to send. It happened again. Check out this video for another great story and be sure to leave a like on this video if you made it this far please, it really helps the channel. Big up the patrons and members and special thanks to Techno Ninja, GFHD, Infinite Tune, Kamana, Viger and Andre Bichert.